Hey Exiles, or here? With ExileCon looming around the corner, let's revisit the Ngamakinui teaser as even with its minute-long time span, it shows a snippet of PoE2's world. After repeatedly watching it at 0.25x speed, here are the details, some interpretations, and a whole lot of theory in what the trailer showed us. This is breaking down the Ngamakinui teaser after 0.25x speed. Detail 1. The name, Yama Kanui. Did you know that Yama Kanui can already be seen in-game? Well, just a snippet of it. In the epilogue map, it's featured there, near the waypoint. But what is this Yama Kanui? Yama Kanui pertains to the homeland of the Karui. A quick background of the Karui, they worship the Karui gods. And in the first campaign of PoE, they were most notable in Act 5, where the slaves were Karui. Prominent members of the Karui faction are the Marauder class, Maramoa, Lani, Haku, and Wakano. In IRL, the Karui were inspired by the Maori people of New Zealand, and with the tribalistic theme of their design, it shows. So, the trailer hints at it taking place at Ngama Kanui, which isn't too far from where the Exiles and Kerak ended up at the epilogue of PoE 1 really wondering if we'll be able to see the Karui Shores again in PoE 2. Detail 2, The Witch's Model Is she really the witch? We know that the models of the characters will be vastly improved. However, this witch does not resemble what the current witch looks like at all. Comparing to the earlier 2019 PoE 2 trailers, where the witch there still resembled the current model, even the voice does not sound akin to the witch. Where are the gods? I need more mana. Some interpretations of this drastic change are Character customization. Her hair is short, but retains physics, which is an incredible touch, GGG. And her skin color, not pale at all, but a healthy, fair skin, might be a light thing though, is different. Character customization might not be too far off the imagination that or will have the origins of the exiles be different. Why is the witch in Yama Kanui anyway? Is she part of the tribe? Her robes kind of fit the team. Speaking of her robes, have you guys noticed how the chains in her robes jingle? The skirt physics is noticeable but the chains on her shoulders also move and it feels incredible. The feedback to the physics brings makes the world feel like a world and not just a static representation of what a robe is. I still fondly remember my handcrafted and stacking occultist vestment. It didn't feel as if it was a rope. Also, better sandals confirmed. Detail number three the enemies. Maybe it's just the presentation, but the enemies actually spawn after the witch attacks the aggro of the first monster. Kind of like how the screamer would call upon its brethren in zombie games. That's really cool because Chris elaborated on how they'll be making enemy AI more interesting. This might be a feature rather than cinematic flair, vastly different from how the mindless hordes of monsters attack the exile on site on BOE1 at the moment. As for their design, unfortunately for the Terui people, it might seem like they are infected, turning them into a mindless and zombie-like creature. The same red blight on enemies can be seen all the way back from POV2's first trailer. I wonder where this seed of corruption came from, but it's powerful enough to do that. If anyone got any theories of what it is, feel free to comment. Detail 4. The skills. The skills are, without a doubt, fantastic. They're not one-dimensional at all. Let's take a note on the role first. The way she tucks in her staff near her stomach her knees buckling to the standing up animation. Amazing. The lightning skill is not one dimensional too. In fact, she does not repeat the casting animation. Her hand is in a different position on the second cast. Furthermore, her other lightning skill might be an empowered version of the first skill as the behavior changes after her roll. Acts like spark where the lightning spreads on the ground in a random direction. It even forks off the house. It's kind of like a combination of arc and spark but on the ground. Ziggity mentioned in his video that these are visual upgrades of existing skills. 
we also got to see an Ice Skull that looks like an upgraded version of Ice Nova, which may or may not leave ice spikes on the ground. Could just be visual. And now there's this weird abomination of clouds and lightning. It looks like an empowerment skill, like Sigil of Power. We can see that she's directly harnessing the lightning from this cloud of storms. But the coolest feature of this skill is that <laughs> she floats, like dang. The witch levitates in the air for a few seconds. How cool is that? As for the ice meteor, it kind of looks like Firestorm, but ice. What's more to say? It's a good power fantasy of a witch. It was great. Until we saw that cast on flip. That was mind blowing. I won't say any more words. Just watch how nice spell casting with a flip looks like. Also note that the spells are color coded in her hands. When she casts a spell, the effect is blue for lightning and white for ice. Detail number 5. The boss and boss arena. A big arena, not many ads, and Karui inspired motifs everywhere would lead to a boss, probably. But we probably didn't expect the walls to reveal a boss in a bombastic manner. The debris even reacts to the boss after its destruction. Look at how it bounces off the arm of the boss. Sounds great. The game's graphical fidelity makes me swoon over POE2. I cannot believe it's a free to play game. Detail 6 The logo. This creature might be what the trailer 2 pertains to the seed of corruption. It reminds me of Malachi because of its tendrils, but colors swap into red. What's cool too was how the tendrils are wrapping around the whole mirror. Yes, the material isn't akin to what the mirror of Calandra looks like, but the best comparison we have for the logo shape is the mirror. Makes me wonder if there will be a corrupted mirror in the future. Also, the creature has a lot of eyes. Maybe it'll use these eyes in its repertoire of abilities. Or it has eyes all over Yui 2's ray class. There's also how the logo plays out. Notice how when the text for Pad of Exile comes, the shattered fragments are forged into a metallic material. But it also burns away the creature with dazzling yellow flames. There's only one notable character with those types of fire. I am order. I am the new and the eternal. I am innocence. So Innocence might be coming back in his self-imposed exile. This is quite funny because he too is in exile after the events of PoE1. Let's talk about the symbols for the logo now. The most notable are the five gods present. Innocence, Sin, Solari, and Lunari, albeit the latter two blend in the background perfectly, and the goddess of justice. For the two winged angels, they might also represent Innocence and Sin, but with their symbols already there, they might represent other characters. Feel free to comment who do you think these are. As for the three symbols, comparing them to the old logos of POE, where the Marauder, Witch, and Ranger are in this position, pertaining to how the passive tree is structured, left side strength, top is intelligence, and the right is dexterity, maybe they are symbols of the attributes. However, another theory is that there are new major characters or bosses in PoE 2 that represents these symbols. We'll update when there's more information available. And with that, time to wait for Exile Gone. Most likely, I'll be delving more into the different trailers. This was Oratory and his oratorical blabbering and hyping. Thank you for watching.